Like many kids, I grew up with the classic Crayola crayons, and throughout the years there's actually been a few Crayola-based video games, including the brand new Crayola Scoot. But is this a crazy colorful concept that's worth grabbing a hold of right away, or do the colors on this one fade way too quickly? Crayola Scoot is a mix of Extreme Sports and Nintendo Splatoon series. Coming to us from Outright Games, I'm not surprised with some comparisons to another Nintendo franchise after recently playing Hotel Transylvania 3, which was very much inspired by Nintendo's Pikmin series. But while there are plenty of comparisons that you can make between this and Splatoon, Crayola Scoot does a little bit to stand out on its own. This mostly has to do with the fact that the whole game revolves around scooting. So, you have your scooter, you're going around the map performing various tricks, and every time you do so, you're able to spray paint in all different directions, thus coloring the playfield. Crayola Scoot features both single and local multiplayer, though there's no online, which I think would be a great addition to this title. In the single player, you start off by creating your scooter character and then jump into the world. After a tutorial, you then get to the hub, where you're able to either visit the shop, go to the arcade mode, which also works as the game's multiplayer, or go for the main single player experience, which is a series of islands broken up into multiple different maps and games each. The game has a bit of a mobile game progression where you're going for one, two, or three star ratings and levels, with the difficulties increasing the amount of stars you're able to earn on said maps. So if you want to go for those three star ratings, you're going to have to play each one of these competitions on the hard difficulty. There's around seven or so different modes of play, including both a single and team mode where you're basically just trying to color the most amount of the map as possible. The game keeps track and there's a time limit, and once the time runs out, whoever has colored the most of the map wins. Since it can be done both single and team play, this is a lot of fun, especially if you have a few friends that can join you for it. You there's the crayon race, where a crayon randomly spawns in the map, and whoever is able to grab it first collects it, and whoever gets five first is the winner, whoever has the most at the end of the time limit is the winner. There's a trick competition, and then, like classic Tony Hawk horse mode, you have scoot mode here, where you perform a trick, and then your opponent has to perform a better trick, or else they get one of the letters that spell the word scoot. Whoever spells all the letters out first is the loser. This is actually how you end up competing against the game's bosses. How the game works is, as you're competing in the random competitions, and you can do whichever competitions you like, you have to earn a certain star rating or complete certain events first for certain ones to unlock, but as you complete them, you earn experience. When you level up to the next level, you must defeat a boss-like character in order to move up to that rank officially. With the three islands, the six or so bosses, game modes, and multiplayer, there actually is a fair amount to scoot. There's also the shop where you can buy upgrades for your scooter, as well as plenty of customizable options to dress up your character. The controls in the game are okay, it took me a bit of getting used to as it controls a little bit different than some other classic extreme sports titles, but once I got the hang of actually jumping with the scooter and being able to perform a variety of tricks, I got the hang of it easily. Though I found sometimes just spamming random tricks anytime I jumped in the air was enough usually to win most competitions. The game also suffers from performance issues. When there's a fair amount of action going on, or even just a little amount of action going on, the game can start to slow down, getting to a point of really just unbearable when there's a lot of stuff going on. Thankfully, that was the biggest issue I had with the game. It didn't crash on me, but with so much of that happening throughout the game, it definitely put a damper on the experience. Unfortunately though, even with the variety of game modes, the overall game can become a bit tedious after a few hours of play. Thankfully, other than the problems I've already mentioned, the game didn't crash on me or other major bugs. Crayola Scoot is available on PS4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PC for $39.99. It does feature a platinum trophy on the PlayStation 4. Overall, I give the creators of the game a lot of credit for trying to come up with a creative concept. They had the idea of Splatoon and mixing it with Extreme Sports is an interesting idea that's performed pretty well here. It just ends up having some performance issues, as well as I wish there was a bit more depth to the gameplay so that it would end up appealing to maybe a bit of a wider audience because the concept is actually really cool, though I think some of the younger gamers that end up getting this game will end up getting some enjoyment out of it. You may want to wait, though, for a bit of a price drop. With everything said, I'm going to be giving Crayola Scoot on the PS4 a 6 out of 10. That's going to wrap up this review, though. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoy.